Junkyard Junkie back here with another video and today we are going to be adding TPMS to a car that didn't come factory with this. So you may be asking yourself what is TPMS? TPMS stands for Tire Pressure Management System. What it does is if your tires get too low it will warn you it will give you a TPMS light that way you can fill them up and all this. So it's a good idea because you don't want to run around on you know underinflated or overinflated tires. So it's a great system to have on any car. I don't care if it's an older, you know, 1990 Honda Accord. It's a good thing to have. Also, another reason that you want a TPMS uh, system in your car is because if you are driving on underinflated or overinflated tires, it will cause more wear and uneven wear. So you're gonna have to spend more on replacing tires. TPMS was not always a standard feature. Actually, it didn't even come to be until 2008 with the Tread Act. This was after a bunch of rollovers with uh, Ford Explorers and uh, Firestone tires. So any car after 2008 will have TPMS. It's kind of like how they switched to OBD2 in 96 and how now they are switching to where all newer cars will have reverse cameras. But maybe you can't afford a car that's 2008 or newer. That shouldn't stop you from being able to feel safe and secure in your car because you don't want underinflated tires. It'll wear them out quicker. That's going to cost you money or it can cause wrecks. So with this product, hopefully it's going to be a good product and it's it's going to be cheap enough where I feel like anybody should be able to afford it. So this is what we're going to be looking at today. Uh, don't quote me. I believe it was $40. It might have been $30. I don't see the actual manufacturer's name on there. This install for this is actually really easy and we're about to walk you through it now. But before I do, I do want to give a sincere thank you for a thousand subscribers. I didn't know if I could ever even reach that many. So I'm very, very grateful. That's a genuine thing from me to you. And as appreciation, I'm going to give one of these away to you know anybody that comments on this video and that is subscribed, you will be entered in and then I'll do a random drawing and whoever wins it, I will message you or comment, get your email address or something that way I can uh, message you and then I will send one out to you. Okay, so if we look here, we have an air leak alarm, a low pressure alarm, high pressure alarm, high temperature alarm, and solar charging. So we'll go ahead and open that up. So we open it up and see what we get here. And that's cool. So it does come with any tools you need. So you will not even need tools. You can just buy this one kit and be ready to go. So you do have the option to charge it up, which it's nice to have the option. But like I said, I'm very much for solar powered. That way you don't have to keep doing it. Uh, we got instructions. And then here's the little caps that will go on your valve stem. So we're going to take the valve stem caps off and this is what you'll get instead. And actually it tells you RR, so that'd be right rear, right left, uh, front right and front left FL So here's the display now the display does look pretty tiny I'll have to wait until we actually you know uh, Start it up to actually give you a good idea if I think it's good or not because you may want a bigger display But even if it's small you can just check it from now and then because you don't have to always Constantly be looking at it. So if you have to get a little closer and look at it. That's not too bad of a thing So don't lose your wrench because with these, to get the battery out, you use the wrench press down right here on the back side of it. Okay, so first thing you wanna do is remove your valve cap. So just spin it off. And then you'll take this little, looks like a little washer. They call it a anti-dismantle gasket. So we're just gonna put this on here. Okay, so once you got that on there, all you want to do is find the corresponding cap. So like this one says FL, front left. It also says A, so I'm pretty sure in the manual it'll probably show you where A goes, but just go off the lettering, front left. And we're going to screw it on here, and it's probably going to make a large hissing noise as it screws on. Don't worry. Yep, there it was. Once we get that on there tight, now we're going to take that wrench and move this nut back to it. 
So we'll grab our wrench. Spin it by hand first, just because it's easier. All right, now that's good and tight, so this should be ready to go. Same thing here. We'll get our FR, front right. And this is also B, so now you know the front right goes to B. Same thing, you would take the cap off. Most cars has still have them on there. Some people take them off and forget to put them back on. Now we're just gonna screw it on there. I heard it hit. It's good and tight. Go back with fingers. So just take your wrench, fully tighten it down. There you go. Don't go crazy with it. You don't want to accidentally rip your valve stem or something like that. So now on to the next one. Okay, so now once again, we'll grab our next one, which is RR, so right rear, and it's also labeled as C, but just like before, take your little anti-washer, whatever they want to call it, or gasket, this is going to keep it secure. Now we'll take this, you're going to hear it hiss, you may not because my microphone cancels out a lot of background noise what you got tight tighten back down this back side depending on your rim it may be a little weird to get back here there we go Okay, now we're at the final one. This has been an extremely easy install. Now you want to get RL for rear left. And it's also got a D on it, so if you're going off the letters. Once again, put the little gasket on there. And we'll screw this down. And then we will come back with this. Good to go. Okay, so it says to hold the right button down to turn on. There we go. And we are in bar. And if you want to turn it off, you just hold down this right button again. Okay, so I held down the middle button it said pressure unit setting and as you can see bar is flashing so we're gonna hit the right button there we go now we're on psi unit setting. now we got celsius up there here in the states we use fahrenheit Tire high pressure. Alert value setting. okay for too high 43 is fine Tire low pressure. Alert value setting. and 29 for that is perfectly fine too That's Pressure fine. Unit setting. Okay, so now we're just going to hold the middle button. I think that'll take us out. Setting okay. Okay, so this is probably why you want to read the manual before you do this, but so where we already went ahead and installed them, you want to turn this on first so that way it can detect them. It did detect the front passenger side and I didn't do anything to it, but the rest of them I'm going to unscrew and then screw back on and it should be good to go. Okay, so I finally have them all synced up. I'm not gonna lie, that's kind of a little bit of a pain. I had to keep unscrewing them and screwing them back in. And they just kind of came, you know, whenever they wanted to pair. But once they paired, now they seem to be perfectly fine. If you look here, uh, I don't know how well it looks on the camera, but I can visibly see all the numbers just fine. And now we're gonna test what happens if it detects a leak. So we'll grab this cap, pull it off. Left, 
So as you can hear, it's saying front left tire leaking. And it says zero on there. So we'll hit the middle button. Now I'll make it be quiet. We'll put that back on there. I put it back on there, it's still showing zero. And now it's back up to 35. Okay, so the last step of this is figuring out where you want to put it. I definitely recommend you putting it up here somewhere with of course the solar panel facing upwards, all the buttons at the top. You put it somewhere up here, maybe get some uh, 3M adhesive tape and put it right there. That might be what was in the box. I'll go look in just a second. But if you put it here, it'll shine in and it'll be fine. But if you have to charge it, there's the charging port. And honestly, this seems like a really good little piece of technology for how inexpensive it is. Okay, so it did come with this and it looks like it has plastic on both sides. It's probably just sticky on both sides. So I'm about to peel that, stick it underneath and then put it in its spot. So there is one final thing that you do want to do and I highly recommend you doing it is to go around to all four. I'll only show you one, but do this on all four. Get you a bottle. I got an old Windex bottle filled with soap and water. As you can see all the bubbles, just spray it down. If it's got an air leak, you'll see bubbles start popping out. And this one has no bubbles, so we're good to go. I'm gonna do this for all four and you should do the same because these can create a air leak if it's done improperly or if it's messed up itself. So it's always good to check. That way you don't get a flat tire trying to do something nice for your car. Final thing I wanna say is remember I am doing the giveaway to give back to y'all for supporting me. Once again, I am very thankful. Just leave a comment and be subscribed to my channel. That way I can put all the people that comment into a random number generator and whoever wins, I will go in the comments and ask for your email or some way to contact you. You just reply back and I will get in touch and you can delete it after I contact you and I will get it sent to you. Thank you. And that's all there is to putting TPMS on your car. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below in the comment section. If this video was helpful, please give me a like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you.